In a previous video, I made a review of the uh, complete orchestral collection sound library, and it really wasn't that great. I mean, it showed enough, but there was a lot more, and there was a lot of questions that were asked, and a lot of things I didn't address, or things that were misleading about the library. So I want to take a more in-depth look um, this time around. So I'm going to go to the Complete Orchestral Collection. I'm going to try to go through everything that's worth going through. Now you can see there are quite a bit of folders starting out. You have the Advanced Orchestra, the Classical Choir, the Orchestral Colors, Smart Violins, Total Piano, X Bonus Tracks, and X Elements. Now this stuff is all cool, but we're going to start out with the meat, which is the advanced orchestra. Well, that's actually not all of it. We have the complete classical collection, string essentials, and string tools. The string, uh, the string essentials are uh, worth looking into, but we'll get to that in a second. So we start out with our main sections, the strings, the brass, woodwinds, percussion, harp, combinations, single instruments, and notation. We'll start out with the strings. Inside of strings, we have the advanced orchestra strings, solo strings, and symphonic strings. Now, obviously, the solo strings are going to be solo patches, but the... I'm not exactly sure why there is a symphonic strings section and the advanced orchestra section. They are slightly different samples. They're set up differently, but I'm not exactly sure what the main differences are, but we'll, we'll look into that as well. Now, what I like about this is that it has a full strings patch. So for people that like to start out with a full strings patch rather than having all the string section be cut up, you do have that. Now, in pretty much all of the patches or the folders, you're going to have this FX, VA, and warm patches. All that is is that they have some preset effects. Um, I wouldn't recommend dealing with those. Typically, I like to just go for the dry. Um, there is one exception, but we'll be getting to that in a second. So we start out with the full strings, dry. Let me turn this up a little bit. Now there is one thing that I am not a big fan of is that uh, there seems to be, maybe it's just my MIDI controller, but there seems to be a pretty high threshold for how hard you have to hit the key to get, you know, a reasonable velocity. Because this is, you know, I, I hit the key pretty normally and A little low I do have the audio for the for my DAW here set a little bit lower than the mic so there is a little bit of that but what I would recommend if you like doing a lot of live play recording is you can turn it up just a little bit here or if you have some sort of volume insert that you like to use you can go ahead and use that Now you can see that there are some effects here that you can play with. Um, I typically don't mess with those because I have some that I use already, so I don't really need, need to use their, their effects. There are other things that I'm not 
exactly sure why I would mess with that, but if you know about microtuning and all this stuff, automation, then you can play with that. But I typically don't. Now there is also a, a tuning here, which again, you, you probably have a plugin or something for that, um, but it does have a built-in tuning adjustment and there is a very real use for that that I will show later on. Uh, one of the questions that I got was that in, in my last video that there was a lot of reverb and there was a lot of reverb so you can you can hear that it's very dry let me turn this up just a little bit more so I don't have to smack the keyboard pretty dry and what's nice about that is that you can go in to your inserts let's say I just want a reverb the uh, Sanford reverb is pretty cool um, if you want to go like a medium room Maybe for that more smaller orchestral sound, like a chamber orchestra, you can go even bigger. And if you want to do something ridiculous, you can go to Thunderdome. Very ethereal sounding. So, that is the full strings dry. There are no key switches as you can see here. I'm assuming that my mouse is on. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so I'm going to leave this in a large room just for a little bit of a default. That's fine. OK. Let's move on to the violins. Now there are a lot of patches here. The only ones that I would recommend using, if you remember earlier I said there was only one besides the dry that I would use, and it's the XFX one. We'll start out with the dry patch. So you can see the red keys, there are a lot of articulations here. You have uh, sustained, slow sustained, tremolo, sordino. Let's go through some. Uh, let's, let's go through some of these here. Oops, wrong one. Go to slow sustained. Tremolo.
Sordino. It's probably one of the better sounding articulations in this library. So just keep that in mind. Or was I? Tremolo. What's cool about it is that these patches or the, the articulations, it's not just your standard uh, sustain, uh, pizzicato, staccato, and tremolo. Um, but it has a lot of other things that are probably more used in more classical era composing or classic or uh, classically influenced modern composers like film composers like John Williams. Um, they have a triller. Right? Sort of a Mission Impossible style thing. They have a few of them. They have the, I guess it's minor, major. They have a Pizzicato 1 plus 2. I'm not exactly sure what that is ref uh, referencing, but here it is. And it is velocity sensitive. I should have said that at the very beginning. So, you have that. Got your pizzicato, um, staccato. The staccatos aren't the best in this, in most of these patches. Typically, I would assume people want staccato to be very beefy and powerful. And you could probably play around with some inserts or maybe some of the settings here to achieve that effect. But they are a little bit light. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, if we have another staccato, not sure what the difference is. We have the crescendo. That one's pretty nice. We have a detaché, which is a pretty rare articulation, it seems like, maybe. It's uh, very similar to staccato. At least in the way it sounds, I'm not sure about in the way it's played in real life. So you could probably use it as a substitute for for staccato if you wanted to. Crescendo, detaché, grace down.
decrease up. Two more. We have grace down. Uh, grace down minor. And grace up minor. So you can see just with the violins, there are a lot of articulations here. Um, they will be, it's not as easy to play live recordings, like I said earlier, with, with these patches on a lot of them. But that's easily circumvented if you are just going to pencil in your, your MIDI data, you know. Then you can program it all to sound as best as it can sound, which kind of solves all that, all those problems. So moving on to the violins XFX. Now this all the XFX patches are my favorite. Um, although the violins dry do have more articulations, this is probably more akin to a lot of the sound libraries available now where there's only what four of these articulations but there's a couple of them built into these four key switches so you have piano to forte staccato one to two uh, piano to tremolo which is a pretty nice one and piano or sorry tremolo piano to tremolo forte So the way this works is it gets the mod wheel involved and everyone uses the, the mod wheel. So So this one will give you that dynamic range that everyone's looking for in an instrument. There are, there's also the staccato one, which probably doesn't have too much of a difference. Or I guess there's a bit of a difference there. The, I guess staccato one is tighter. Turn this up, okay. Sustain piano to tremolo. I like that one. And we have tremolo piano to tremolo forte. So the XFX ones probably will give you the most, or 
closer to what modern, more modern libraries will offer you. Um, but if you're, if you like programming the MIDI inputs yourself to a very great degree, you know, Violins Dry is also very good. But if you want the mod wheel, XFX is the way to go. So to save a little bit on the time, the violas, cellos, and double basses all have the same variations, right? You have violas dry. I'll play a little bit of that just to get an idea. Let me find. Okay. Now that probably sound a little bit weak, the staccato uh, patches. You probably hear my keyboard right now. That's how hard I have to hit it to get that sound. So you just have to program in that velocity. Those are the vi the violas, dry, and of course you have violas uh, XFX, which has the mod wheel.
Let's go on to the cellos dry. And if you're curious what the model wheel does in the dry patches, I believe it's just vibrato. Maybe very slight vibrato. Yeah, it's very slight. So there's a little bit less patch or sorry articulations in the cellos. Let's move on to XFX. After I turn it up. So the cellos are a little bit beefy, which is nice. And the double basses.
It's a very nice scratchy tremolo sound. Now some of these patches have unique articulations like the crescendo tremolo for the double bass. So it, it has a little bit of variety in the articulations. That's another unique one. Just to reiterate, you know, this library has a lot of, uh, I guess, unique articulations and orchestral acoustic sounds that will add some variety to your compositions. So that is it for the advanced orchestra strings. Um, before we go to the solo strings, which are basically just solo versions of all that, um, let's go into symphonic strings. So let's go to dry. I guess one of the differences is that the full strings patch in the symphonic section has a few articulations, which is helpful. So this would probably be the full strings patch to use because you can get your uh, key switches in. You can find that key. There it is. So it's really not that bad. You know, it's I think it's good enough quality for someone starting out. And if you're sort of a minimalist and you don't like to have you know, thirty thousand orchestral libraries, you know, there probably are some newer ones that have all of this, but 
I understand the price point is still like two hundred dollars. So it's it's tough to beat. At least the value of everything that you get. And also another thing that I should have pointed out earlier was that a lot of these patches, pretty much all of them, are very light on memory. So bigger ones that have a lot of our uh, built-in patches, like this one, can go up to you know 65, 100 megabytes. But a lot of them are even smaller than less than 50. Some of them are just a couple megabytes. So for people that don't have you know 16 gigabyte rigs, you know this is going to be good for them, especially for people that might be running 32-bit systems. They can only utilize, you know, four gigabyte, uh, four gigabytes of RAM. So moving on to soft staccato. Staccato one. This staccato is this this patch is a little bit better than the others. It's a little bit brighter. like that. Sustained. Sustained, slow, long release. Pizzicato. This is probably one of the better string patches just because some of the sound quality is a little bit better. It's a little bit easier to play live and it has enough articulations in one track so you don't have to use 30 tracks for each articulation, which some people do. I don't haven't seen the use in that. For people that have limited track use, that's not possible. Um, there is no XFX in the Symphonic string section. So, um, I guess I should mention what these other patches are. Like the legato patch just means that that's like monophonic, if I'm not mistaken. You can't play several notes at the same time. 
it's more meant for playing uh, single notes, but you can do that with a dry patch without all the effects. So it's just, I don't see the advantage. Then you have this one that attaches a few effects to the mod wheel. You just load it up. I guess if you, this is the attack, uh, the attack module. Uh, I think this one just increases the velocity in a dynamic way. So that one would actually be useful. Um, if you want to do, uh, do that, you just have to turn off the reverb. If you want to use your own reverb and any other effects that might be on here. So I guess I should make an amendment that uh, the model wheel one is actually would probably be pretty useful. It's this one that has the, the attack placed on the model wheel. So the, the patches you should really consider are the FX MW, the XFX, which is in the other section, and the the dry ones. These other ones are just additional effects. So since we're in the symphonic string section, I mean, most of these are the same. It maybe they sound slightly better. Maybe the memory is different. Let's let's check that. That's thirty three point seven nine. Let's go to violins dry, in advanced orchestra. Yeah, this is twenty six point nine nine. So larger memory probably. There's a little bit more sample quality there. So just turn this reverb off. So if you want slightly higher quality, So I'll just skip to the cellos here, go to FX mod wheel, turn off the reverb because I have my own. Right, and all these other articulations are the same. I don't want to spend too too much time on a lot of these because a lot of them are the same or slightly different, and I wanna don't want to waste anybody's time too much. So I guess the final verdict is that symphonic strings appear to be slightly higher in quality. 
slightly higher in memory. And they do have the better full strings patch. So probably if you want the best quality, you could go with the symphonic strings. Now the solo strings have a few different patches here. They have stuff like phrase. I don't know why you would do this, but I guess it might be useful for somebody. These aren't really phrases. I can see this being useful. Just to add sort of a playing style on some of the notes. So this, this would probably give some different flavors, different sounds to a, a solo, a violin solo. Or if you just want to Mickey Mouse the heck out of whatever you're writing. I guess this is a, an arpeggiator, which if you can't write your own arpeggios, I guess you can use this. This is arpeggiator, arpeggio diminished. I can find a key that works. So that could be useful to add maybe a few you know, variations instead of just always having sustained notes and staccatos in your in your violin solos. This would be useful. Let's see if there's anything else here that's different. Violin chord. So if you like the way any of that sounds, to add a little bit more variety in your solos, I can see that maybe being useful. These are just variations, chord warm effects, phrase warm. So the violin dry patches are basically all the 
string solo patches in this library are basically built the same as the advanced orchestra ensemble or string sections. Let's actually do the mod wheel one. I completely forgot about the mod wheel one. Just take the reverb off and it's dry, so I might as well get the mod wheel with it. Oh, got a spiccato, pizzicato. Expressivo, that's a new one. So that's it for violin. Same thing with the viola. I'm just going to go to mod wheel since there are no unique patches here. And I'm just assuming here that people want to see all of these individually. If you don't want to, or you already get the idea, just skip on ahead.
One thing to realize is that, for example, in this mod wheel patch, you can change the, I'm guessing that's volume probably, or velocity, one of the two. So you can get, first you can set it to, where is it? A sustained piano and put it all, put the mod wheel all the way down. notice that sort of realistic uh, what's that called bow switching bow when they switch directions with the bow that adds a level of realism um, so you can get some more expression with the model wheel but you can also adjust it with the velocity so there's a lot of there's a lot of nuance as far as volume and expression that you can get with these, with this library. Let's move on to everybody's favorite, the cello, right? That's everybody's favorite, it seems like these days. Um, here we go. Not the best sounding. You can you, you can definitely work with that. See if there's anything unique in the cello phrases. These might all be the same. That was kind of cool. that let's go to the now there's less 
articulations for the double bass in the model wheel section. We have sustain, sustain slow, and martel, or mar martelle, however you say that. I'm guessing it's just a variation of a short note, sort of like a staccato or pizzicato. Okay, so that does it for the advanced orchestra strings. Took a whole hour. Let's move on to brass. Now there's less to see in brass, I think. Ah, uh, there's enough. So the only thing that's not good about this is that they don't have a like a full brass section like their like their full string section i don't know why that was probably one of the missteps of this library so let's look at the trumpets at the mod wheel Staccatos on the brass aren't that great. There are a couple patches that have something that's like a staccato, but you might have to play around with the staccato patches with some effects or something to, to bring out that beef that people want. You're definitely not going to get any horn blaring um, a la Hans Zimmer or Junkie XL, that's for sure. That's a new one, Flutter Tongue. That one's pretty cool because it's it's uh, probably too fast 
for any of the staccato um, the staccato patches sound well at that speed so they've recorded it already like that and it has the right sound that you'd want for that effect Okay, let's take a look at the Trumpet XFX, which is mostly the same, except it fades in between. And see, that's the thing between the XFX versus the Mod Wheel patch, which is number 13 here. Um, Number 13, or sorry, the XFX, like this sounds more like what a soft to loud transition would sound like on a trumpet. Because it's the, the, the library is transitioning between two different uh, samples, right? The piano and the forte sample. The monorail one, although still useful, is only, it sounds like it's only getting a little bit louder, like the same sample is only getting a little bit louder, which is still fine, but you're not going to get that more realistic sound that you might be looking for. Those are the trumpets, trombones, two, let's see, mod wheel, The sustained piano is pretty realistic, I'd say. Again, the staccatos are not anything to write home about. This one's new, it's a lip trill. Not all of the keys play anything. Seems to start on A. 
I feel like you could probably write some like big band swing type type stuff with this. I just like it because it it goes beyond the standard sort of cinematic use of the of common uh, uh, orchestral articulations. That's kind of the advantage of having so many articulations is you can add different sounds that you might not otherwise use. Sounds like crap. That's it for the trombones. French horns. Also, everybody's favorite. Now, there's only two articulations with the French horns in the F, the XFX patch. There's piano to forte and staccato one to two. Not the greatest. Let's look at the mod wheel. Okay. Yeah, I think the mod wheel is probably my second favorite to XFX in most cases. This patch seems to start on a high E over here. Again, really cool sounds. So that's it for the ensemble brass. Solo brass, they have a little bit more variety. 
you have your trumpets, trombones, and French horns, but you have a higher horn, the piccolo trumpet, and a lower horn, the tuba. Let's look at the piccolo trumpet. Let's go to, they have no XFX. That's standard now for all of the, or it's not standard, it's, they don't have it for the solo instruments. Let's go to mod wheel. So you can kind of get in that higher register with the piccolo trumpet, which is typically not an instrument that's included in some of the more standard orchestral libraries these days. There's a few unique patches in trumpet solo. Trumpet perform SP. Guess we can find out what that is. I don't even know what that is. I'm sure that one was funny to record. So that one's interesting. Uh, let's go to the mod wheel. This is Sordino, which I'm guessing for the, tr the horns is that it's muted.
could be good for some noir type music. Instead of turning it up every time, I'm just going to add some volume here. That might be easier. Let's see. So the tuba mod wheel patch has seven articulations and the dry also. Okay. Just curious. So this is very much a full orchestra. It has a lot of things that you can use or not use, which is the beauty of it. Okay, moving on to a different section. We have the Woodwind Ensemble. Got the flutes, nothing unique there. We do have the XFX. Let's go to the mod wheel first. Turn this up a little bit more. Point two.
kind of sounds like that high note in uh, the Phantom of the Opera score. Both the uh, new one, the, the movie, and the old movie, the black and white movie. ever watched the old version it's a lot creepier especially because it's silent um, completely different story based on the actual book not the play uh, adaptation or whatever it's called that came afterwards which is so good music wise anyway clarinets Oh, we didn't do XFX for flutes. Limited, but still very useful. Has a real nice Looney Tunes kind of vibe that you can do. This one just says X. Assuming it's the same thing, just without the reverb. Yep. Clarinets, I'm trying to get through these a little bit quicker. And there's nine instruments here. Again, you get a lot of stuff. Let's, okay, they got phrases. Let's look at the phrases. Maybe useful.
That one's pretty cool. There's your flute. Alto flute. Whoops, out of range. Alto flute is actually pretty nice. Regular flute, got their phrases. An ornament, as it's called. Pretty cool. Let's go to the mod wheel. Got the bass flute effects. Haven't seen this one. Okay, so it's sound effects. Pretty cool. I got a mod wheel. Moving on to the oboe, which someone in the comments in the last video said that the library was worth its money just in the oboe. But 
I don't know if I'd pay $200 for just an oboe. Let's see the phrases. All the same phrases. Let's go to mod wheel. We have the English horn, which is a little more rare. You already know what phrases they have. Go to mod wheel. So they have the regular clarinet and the bass clarinet in solo.
So we have the bassoon here. Bassoon is one of my favorites. Sounds very nice. And finally, the contrabassoon. So that does it for the woodwind section. So as you can see, the percussion section is pretty hefty. Um, okay, try to go through these quickly. A lot of these patches are pretty small since they're just one percussion instrument. Except for that one. That would probably be good for cinematic effects, probably. Sorry if you're hearing my keyboard, it's right by the mic.
Notice the memory size, it's only barely two and a half megabytes. So a lot of these are pretty light, like I said, remember that. Their gong is pretty cool. It's only 13 megabytes. This is probably the if you were if you were to use no other if you just want to use one percussion patch this would be the one it's the orchestra percussion mix it has a lot of the stuff you just heard besides all the instrument effects and places them in uh, just one patch so as your snares your cymbals triangles, big drums, your gongs. They have different kinds of snares. Your rolls. I'm not exactly sure what these last few snare sounds were. Sounds like they might be grouped. But pro tip, if you do want to have like a drum core, like a military style marching band, you could probably use some of these. Um, I like lower sounding snare drums. Go with some velocity. It'll probably be that one.
you can you can have uh, several tracks and have one one snare drum on one and tune the other ones to different tuning so that they don't phase and then you can have a larger sounding ensemble of snare drums at least that's the way I, I figured out how to do that next one is only snare Don't want to restart. Very decent timpani. This is if you just want to play it with your left and right hands. Lovely musical sounds. Sounds gross. So that is all of the percussion. What is next? We have a harp.
This is probably the heart patch that you'd want to use. Your cords. That iconic harp sound, you got it right there. I won't look into these one because there's tons of them, but also they're just, I'll just open one so you can see how they work. Um, so I think it just splits the keyboard. I don't see any use for it because, I mean, you have multiple tracks for everything, so why would you need the keyboard to be split? If you find use for it, it's there. Maybe if they had like a trumpet French horn split, which they might. Uh, It's sort of like a full brass patch. But the the range isn't exactly right because it starts high on the right side but it doesn't go all the way to, to the lowest. It kind of splits off and starts over in the middle. So not that useful, but it's there. Now there's this single instruments. Um, what I've gathered this to be is just all the different articulations in one patch. So if you're one of those that likes to have, you know, 40 different tracks for just the violins, you know, this would probably be it. So they accommodate to that too. Got the pretty much every instrument we just looked at in separate articulations. So if you want to organize your template like that, you can do so. Now this notation, I gather that it's for use in notation software, um, but I don't know why you couldn't use the other ones if it's in the same library. Maybe they're just, um, smaller patches maybe I don't know some of these might sound better to you better staccato actually
no mod wheel. So Maybe the staccato sounds slightly better. I won't get too much into these. Yeah. So you can look through those. Yeah, so I guess if you want to use these, you can. They seem to be pretty similar. You have your ensemble instruments and your singles. They are separated into... They're separated into the articulations. So there's a lot. A lot of these just sound the same. So that does it for the or the advanced orchestra. Uh, we're at the two hour mark. Two hours and eight minutes. Um, moving on to classical choir, we have the choir cluster. See if I can zip through these. Notice the memory, it's 0.74 megabytes. You can make very dissonant sounds with these. Pretty eerie. I can see using a pitch band or something with these.
That one's pretty cool. It starts off uh, in sync and it kind of gets dissonant. Bunch of hissing. That's the choir cluster. It's mostly dissonant. Morphing. sure what that is exactly this is the choir syllables section Here is probably the main 
section, the classical choir section. So that's more of the traditional a, uh, e, o type uh, vowel choir patches. These would probably be the most useful ones. And these would be, you know, just for an accent. Orchestral colors. Uh, Jesus, that's a lot. Brass layer, let's see what that is. Sounds like a background type of sound. the uh, intro tuning sound. Sorry for that bump. So the most of the brass staccato in this library is kind of meh. But if you want a beefier brass sound, you can use this patch called short brass. Um, Seems like the left side is more bright and it's darker on the right side. Can't really use it as staccato, but if you want that strong, short note, it's more of a blast.
It's sort of a string swelling sound. I can see a string layer being useful as a quick tool if you're doing like a film something with visuals and you just need something subtle and quick. You don't want to spend a bunch of time processing or programming in the MIDI input. You just do something like this. Right on a scene that wants to be scored, but don't need a bunch of music. That sounds pretty useful. That's just string sustain patch. Same concept as a string layer, but for a woodwind. And that was actually the first one was a brass layer. Whoops. So the basic orchestral sounds would be useful as maybe as quick shortcuts or again accents. You don't want it to be your main thing. It's in finales is interesting, but it's a little too specific. You could probably use that. But this is kind of getting in the loops territory a little bit where you just have something that's pre-made that's like four measures or something and you just piece together music from pre-composed things. But that's sort of an effect, right? Sounds like a Monty Python moment. The Knights Who Say Knee. I can see that being useful. That is the best cadence ever. Um, I don't know if you would need to use it here or just program it yourself, though. And that probably the most satisfying cadence resolution that could ever exist.
could probably use that. Sounds cool, but it's basically an entire composition. A little bit too much of a shortcut if you ask me, but you can play around with it. Basically the whole orchestra playing three notes. Another effects. Okay, that one probably be useful. Interesting. That's a pretty cool sound.
another uh, brass effect that is larger sounding than a lot of these staccatos and short notes in the regular patches. You could probably use this in different areas of your compositions. Pretty cool. Getting a very Wagner sort of feel from that. Oh, that's the end. So that's hits and finales. Moods and timbers. What is this? Uh, this would have a cinematic application, I would think. Um, if you just need quick sounds, uh, I, I would think this would work. It's not as satisfying because you're not writing it yourself, but there it is. All right, you, you can make this with all the other patches. You have your staccato, pizzicato, and your trills, or whatever. A lot of these sounds you can't make with the, with the other samples, so you could use them here. It's a cool sound. It has all the nuance of a full classical orchestra. That's moods and timbers, runs and sequences. I'll just play a couple of these. If the if the staccato and short note uh, samples don't really cut it for you, and you want something that sounds a little bit better, you could also use these runs and sequences since it's, since it's recorded as short notes it sounds realistic so that's one solution
So a lot of cool stuff you could use there. Okay, smart violins. Um, geez, okay. Don't know how useful those would be. A lot of pre-made stuff. It's hard to work with, I think. Is this disco? Don't know why you'd use any of this, but there it is. Okay, this is Total Piano, so Really, the, the best ones here are going to be the classical piano. Pretty basic, not the best sounding piano, but you get it. You can do some effects to it, make it sound better. The pop piano is slightly different. The ambient. What is this, the clavernet? I'm assuming that's how you say it, or the clavernet. Most of these are kind of gimmicky. We have the honky tonk. Um, tack. Basically, classical piano is really all I use from here. There are other keyed instruments uh, somewhere else. Let's go to X bonus tracks. Um, most of these are useful, particularly the organ.
pretty nice actually. It has that, just that right tone for an organ. And it's only a half megabyte. So once again, efficient with the memory. That's what's good about this library. Number two sounds okay. I'm guessing this is the wet glass. Pretty cool. It's a gong. Pretty cool. Pretty cool sounds you could use. Um, you could use the harpsichord. Pretty good harpsichord, I think. The Japanese drum, I'm assuming this is the taiko. A lot of Japanese drums. Sure, how useful that would be. Now, all of these percussion, mixed percussion patches, they really expand the percussion selection. As if it wasn't already pretty wide. There's six mixed percussion patches, uh, not including a Latin percussion patch. Steel drum. Bet I wouldn't really use that one. So that's the bonus instruments. 
I guess we'll have a little bit of sound design. Country. If you're into building soundscapes or something. A rainforest. useful. Orchestral moods, applauding crowd. That would be useful for writing maybe horror type music or a score or something like that. More interesting phrases. I want to say about these uh, samples as a whole is that um, they might sound okay individually or some of them might sound pretty good individually but as a whole because of the variety of sounds you can make this these uh, samples sound like a real real classical orchestra um, with maybe a few exceptions. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, maybe the single violins patch doesn't sound so great or at, on par with something newer, but as a whole, when you have the entire orchestra together, you'll get something that's much more uh, well-rounded, I think. These are ambient uh, patches. If 
you want a quick synthesizer type sound, but you don't want to mess with any synthesizers, even though there's a lot of great synthesizers out there, this would be an easy solution. Let's try to go through a couple of these. good backgrounds for music. That's just a straight up synthesizer. get the idea. A lot of useful synth sounds. Okay, now the extra elements. Um, what is in here is they're like more synthetic sounding orchestral pads. So if we go to a string pad here, It's got some effects in the mod wheel. We'll just keep it open. different sound. Um, you could make a you could make a whole orchestral type track just using these these pads. For example, you have string pads, you have trombone pad. They're very slow actually. That's a trumpet pad, sorry. Uh, violin, sordino. Since it's the whole range of the keyboard, that's probably more like a string pad that you could use. We have I think it's a choir pad. Bells. It's more acoustic. We have a cello pad. More synthetic sounding. Lutes. Do you get the idea? All right, so that is the entire complete classical collection, about 95% or so. Now, string tools, probably don't need this.
it's mostly more of those pre-made kind of stuff. So if you're into that, take a look at the string tools. You have chords. If you want to just play, I'm guessing these are triads, just three note chords, you can look into this. Much better staccato, but in chords. To me, not that useful since I don't really need it. Now, this is like an entire, the string essentials part is like an entirely different sound library. Well, I mean, not, it's like an entirely different string section. Um, but it has dry, light, and optimal. Light is just means that it's slower in memory, and optimal means it's full memory. Let's go with light. So you can see they are string sections. And these, you can see the, the memory size, sample size. It's usually in the hundreds. So this is probably the better sounding string patches in this library. And maybe I should have showed these towards the beginning of this walkthrough, but here we are. It has a more full sound. It's 465 megabytes, so much heftier in memory. If you want higher quality sound, you have it right here. No mod wheel, at least I don't think we do. Doesn't look like it. Oh, here we do. I think we do. We have it in reverse. If you start out on a high velocity note, you can bring it down, that's weird. The strange thing is that um, there, the patch, the key switches are not complete. So this is what should be sustain, and it has the key switches that full strings one didn't have. Much better staccato sound. 
but you need two patches to make it work. Not ideal, but if you can work around that, this is the best sounding strings in this library. So we have the cellos, the basses. And these are mostly higher in memory. And you can see here the basses main setup. That's most of the basses samples. And they have staccato by itself, which is this key switch here. What is that? A, uh, this B. Oh no, it's the, the A. So you can make it work. It's not ideal because it's not all together in one patch. So, you know, not the best setup, but these are the best sounding string samples in this library. Again, they, they split it up maybe because they were made in a older time period where they couldn't fit it all in one patch or something. That's the only thing that I can think of. But they still sound good. They sound better than a lot of the free stuff. And that would be string essentials. So I guess light if you want lower memory and optimal if you can use more memory. But what, what keeps me away from using string essentials is that you don't get everything in one patch like everything else. So that's probably the biggest downside, even though they do sound better. And that actually concludes the complete orchestral collection walkthrough, clocking in at just over three hours. Hopefully, Maybe you don't watch this all at once in pieces, different sections. Um, but to summarize and reiterate from my last video, there is a lot of value in this library. And especially for a beginner, if you're starting out, you don't need to spend $500 plus on all these different libraries. It's that do sound great um, but even if they do sound great they do have the drawback of requiring a, a lot of times a more powerful machine because every patch is like 500 gigabytes at least or several gigabytes I think I said 500 uh, gigabytes I meant uh, megabytes but the point is that they're they're very resource intense so unless you have an expensive rig to run all those samples, it's probably not even worth it to, to get those because now you have to spend even more money on a more powerful machine. So the Complete Orchestral Collection is a very good solution for beginners and even professionals, I would say. Um, on a side note, Orchestral Essentials by, I forgot who makes it, is also a very lightweight uh, library, but I might look into that some other time. Um, I hope you got something from this video, and I will see you in the next one.